Marc Bergevin, you sly fox. He goes out in the media, oh, I'm not going to do anything, it's going to be a quiet deadline. And he goes and rocks the boat with two big moves. Eric Stahl, who I know is old, but dude, he can still play. He's got some good hockey sense, good shot, offensive instincts. That's a good pickup. Don't get it twisted. And he signs Cole Caulfield after his NCAA season ends this week. And those are two big moves. Now, I know Caulfield has to be sent to Laval because they got to make room for him in terms of cap space. But trust me, Caulfield will be up and will be playing with the Habs. I'm going to say it. This season, I'm pretty sure Cole Caulfield's going to get a shot with the team, especially because they know they want to try and lock down that fourth playoff spot and maybe even move up, okay? People forget they've got like uh, 65 games in hand or (laughs) something like that, man, because they missed that week. But uh, they've got a chance to go on a nice run here. But I want to ask today, are they going to do anything else? Because, again, Belgevin, he always likes to temper expectations. Guys, don't get your hopes up because he knows Habs fans are crazy and passionate, right? But every time it seems like Marc Bergevin says, okay, you know what, settle down, guys. Nothing big's going to happen. Something big tends to happen, right? And again, the salary cap is a huge issue for the Montreal Canadiens. It's so tough in every year, but this year especially with everything going on. And he's got to try and maneuver around it. you got to be a bit of a magician here, MB. you got to if you want to make some moves to really push your team over the top. Because the number one area I'm looking at, and I know Habs fans, you're looking at it too, it's on defense. Ben Chirot, injury, he's going to be out for maybe the rest of the season. Bergevin said he should be coming back right before the playoffs. Playoffs. But even with Sherratt there with Weber, I know it's worked decently at times, but wouldn't you rather have a guy like Matthias Ekholm in that spot with Shea Weber? You know what? A guy like Ryan Ellis, that one's a bit more of a pipe dream. Ekholm would be more likely. And again, for the 80th time, I know the cap space is going to be very, very difficult to work with. But that's the kind of move that puts your team over the top. And don't forget, Ekholm's got experience playing with Weber in Nashville. I just feel like that's a match made in heaven. And we know Ekholm's been linked to the Habs basically since his name came on the trade market. But he's also been linked to some other places like the Toronto Maple Leafs, like the Winnipeg Jets. Places that if they got this guy, it would really hurt the Habs, honestly. So this is one of those things where I think the Habs have to try and get this guy not only to improve their own team, but to make sure he doesn't go anywhere else in the North Division. Like if the Jets get this guy, watch out, man. And as far as the Taylor Hall thing, I think that ship has sailed. And honestly, dude, for the Habs, if you're getting Cole Caulfield here, that might even be a better acquisition than getting a depressed Taylor Hall right now with the way things are going in Buffalo. Cole Caulfield, he might be your guy in terms of goal scoring uh, for the next, who knows, decade. I've got high expectations for this kid. You guys know that. But uh, I think you might have just maybe not solved your goal scoring problem. But if you were going to get Taylor Hall, it might be a better and don't forget also way cheaper option to get Cole Caulfield here without having to really give anything up other than trying to make room with cap space. And also, don't forget, Habs fans, you've got two big boys who you're going to have to look at in the offseason, that being Philippe Dano and Thomas Tatar. And we know there's probably more chance than not that they're not going to resign with Montreal. I mean, Dano denied a huge extension in the offseason, and now he's going to have a tough time getting even close to that number. I think it was like five or six million. So you've got that equation coming into it. At some point, you're going to have to pay Suzuki and Kotkin Yemi. Like, there's some big decisions coming up here for Montreal. So, of course, you don't want to make a move only looking at right now that screws you for the future, which Bergevin, he's good at that. He's good at, at keeping his eyes on the now and on the future. But also, he's not afraid to bust down the door and say, if you're in the party, you're in the party. You're going to the big dance, which is the Stanley Cup playoffs. You want to make some noise. You don't want to come in and lose and get swept or something, okay? You want to come in and make some noise, and Bergevin is aware of that. So that's why, not I think, I know he's not done. He's going to do at least one or two more things, sizable things, before the trade deadline to get his team 
all shored up and ready to go for that Stanley Cup playoff run because he knows he's got a shot here, okay? I know the team's gone through a bunch of ups and downs, but they've got the goaltender, they've got the leaders and some decent defense, they've got up front some offense now with Toffoli, Anderson, Suzuki, even Caulfield coming through now. Like, they've got the pieces, he knows it. So that's just what he got to find, the balance between, okay, the cap space and then also not mortgaging your future for one shot at the cup. So you can have multiple chances at the cup in the future. That's what he's looking at. And I'll be waiting, Belgevin. Whenever you're ready, I'll be waiting here. Let's see what you got.